understand things with your mind, but you know things with your spirit. You heard what I said? I'm just going to say it again. You understand things with your mind, but you know things with your spirit. It is possible for you to know things that you don't understand. Does that make sense? It is possible to know things that you don't understand. Now, do I know that God loves me? Yes. Do I understand the love of God? You will never be able to understand the love of God. Does that make sense? So we understand things with our mind, but we know things in our spirit. And that's very, very important. And sometimes in life, we got to move decision. We got to move and make decisions on what we know and don't understand. Does that make sense? The spirit man makes decision on what he knows, not necessarily what he understands. There are things you just know and you know and you know that's what you need to do. But logically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And when you are a spiritual man, you are comfortable making decisions that way. Spiritual people make decisions on what they know in their spirit. Natural people make the decisions on what they understand in their mind. Now, what's the problem with that is that sometimes things that you understand in your mind, by the time you understand it, you get the logic, you get the rationale, it's too late. Because whatever was supposed to happen already happened. Does that make sense, church? Somebody say revelation. So it's very, very important. Loving God with our hearts means we are willing to move by revelation. Uh, uh, revelation. What the, now, why do when you and I need to value revelation as a sign of love? It's because when you, when you love somebody, their words are important to you. So why should you value God's revelation in your love relationship with God? If you're going to grow in the love of God, why should you value divine revelation? Because when you are in love with somebody, their words, no matter how they communicate the word, it could be through an email, it could be through a card, it could be through a text message, it could be verbally. It doesn't matter how they send you the message. Once the person who sends you the message matters to you, then the words become important. Does that make sense? When you love God, his words become important to you. No matter how, no matter how he speaks, whether he speaks through a sermon, whether he speaks through a dream, whether he speaks to somebody else, when you're in love with somebody, no matter how they speak, their words are always important to you. Valuing God's revelation is valuing God himself. When you value somebody's word, you actually say to that person, and you are important to me. Does that make sense, church? Somebody say revelation. Somebody say revelation. Somebody say revelation. Now, one of the problems that you and I have is that we don't get, when God speaks to us and gives us revelation, we don't get it. The reason why we don't get it is because most of us are expecting God to speak to us like our parents speak and our friends speak and our pastors speak. In other words, we are expecting God to speak to us like other people speak. Now, what is the problem with that? The problem with that is that God doesn't speak the way that we speak. In other words, when God is communicating with us, you and I, we expect God to communicate in Creole or French in Sp or Spanish or English, but all of those are natural languages. God is a, sp God is a supernatural God, and God is spirit. The Jesus said, God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is, a, is not a natural man. God is a spiritual being. The Bible says God is spirit. Therefore, when God, because God is a spirit, he is a spiritual being, when he speaks, he doesn't speak natural language, he speaks spiritual language. Does that make sense? Now, there are different natural languages. English is a natural language. French is a natural language. Spanish is a natural language. But when God is getting ready to speak, 
generally, he doesn't speak those natural languages. Every once in a while, the Lord will say a word in English or in French, in Spanish, or whatever language that you speak. But if you are only waiting for those times when God speaks in your language, you will miss 90% of the revelations of God. Because when God speaks the majority of the time, he doesn't speak a natural language. He speaks a spiritual language. Look at what the Bible says in that regard in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. When we're done reading it, uh, when we're done reading it in English, I'm going to, uh, um, in the New King James Version, I'm going to read it in the different language. Let's read together. It says, these things we speak, what does it say? Not in men's, not in words which men wisdom teaches. Let's pause for a moment. The Bible, Paul says, I am teaching you here spiritual things. But he says, I am not teaching you spiritual things which in words that human wisdom teaches. You know what is human wisdom? When you went to your classroom and you were grow, growing up and they said, A, B, this is a table, this is a car, this is a shirt. This is man wisdom. Those are words of man wisdom. Because those words did not come from heaven. The, those words were invented by man. Does that, are you guys with me? It was an angel who came up with the word table. It wasn't an angel who came up with the word car. It was actually a man who thought and said, I'm going to call this a car. But Paul says when God is speaking, when we're talking about spiritual things, the Bible says these, thing, these things we speak, Paul says, not in words which man's wisdom, which man's wisdom teaches, but he says which the Holy Spirit teaches. What does that mean? The same way that men have their own vocabulary, the Spirit of God has its own vocabulary as well. Does that make sense? The same way that men have their languages. It wasn't an angel who came up with the language called English. It wasn't an angel who came up with the language called Creole or French. They were all invented by men. They were words and sentences and paragraphs invented by men. But the Bible says when God is getting ready to speak and we're communicating spiritual things, he says these things we speak not in men's wisdom that teaches, but that the Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit has his own words, its own vocabulary, its way of speaking. And it says, how does the Holy Spirit do, do that? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That last sentence might be a little bit confusing. Let me read another version from the New Jerusalem Bible. Listen to what it says. It says, in these words we speak, not in terms learnt from human philosophy, but in terms learnt from the Spirit. And look at what it says. It says, feeding spiritual language to spiritual things. The text says, feeding spiritual language with spiritual things. So the Bible says that when God is ready to communicate something important to you, he's going to use spiritual language for spiritual things. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? So the same way that they are natural languages, they are spiritual languages. Natural language, for example, English is a natural language. French, as I said, is a natural language. German is a natural language. But when God is getting ready to speak, they are also spiritual languages. For example, dreams are spiritual languages. Visions or spiritual languages. You may be about to make a decision and suddenly you have a vision. You have an image. The image is not in English. It's not French. It's not Spanish. It's not German. It's just an image. Are you guys with me? It's just an image. I think I had given the example. I had told, uh, uh, um, given the example at the church. There was one day I, I, I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I got up in the morning and I prayed. When I was done praying, uh, you know, I pray according to the model of the tabernacle, tabernacle. I have taught on that. And when I get to my, uh, 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 to what is called the Holy of Holies, because usually when I pray, at the end of my prayer, I like to be silent and say, Lord, I've been talking for 30 minutes and I've been talking for an hour and now I want you to talk to me. So I, wa I was praying and I was done praying and I sat in silence and when I said the Lord speak to me and suddenly I saw like a suddenly flash in a, in a, in a, 
you know, a split second, just in a split second, I saw an image of a little tree. It was like a tree in a pot flash in front of me. I saw a tree, like a small tree, okay, in a pot, almost like yeah, a small tree in a pot, and it flashed before me. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? I'm just trying to un make you understand something. I saw a, a small tree in a pot just flashed in front of me. And I suddenly, because I understand that the Lord doesn't speak English or French or Spanish most of the time, when the Bible says he's ready to speak to me, he's going to use a spiritual language. Sometimes he'll speak dreams. Sometimes he'll speak vision. Sometimes he'll speak God feelings. Sometimes he'll speak intuition. Sometimes he'll speak coincidences. Sometimes, but he's going to speak a spiritual language. Uh, did you hear what I say? He, he, he not, doesn't necessarily speak English or French or Spanish, but he'll speak dreams, he'll speak visions, he'll speak tongues, he'll speak a prophetic word, he'll speak an image, he'll speak a hunch, he'll speak a gut feeling, he'll speak a sensation, he'll speak a freedom in my spirit. All of those are spiritual languages, and the Lord is communicating something to those languages. Now, because I understood vision to be a spiritual language, as soon as I saw that, little tree, a, 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 a small tree, like a bush, a small tree in a pot, I asked the Lord what it meant. I asked the Lord what it meant. But the only reason that I pay attention to it is because I understood it to be a spiritual language. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Otherwise, if, it, if I didn't have the knowledge to understand that vision is a spiritual language, all of us, you know how many, you know how many times all of us, we're about to make a decision, we're about to make, make somebody, and an image flashes in our mind in a split second, we pay no attention whatsoever to it. Because we, we, we're waiting for God to speak to us, maybe in our natural language. Are you guys with me? But usually the Lord will speak in a spiritual. And what I have found is most of the time the Lord is going to speak to you in a spiritual language. If you pay attention to it, you start asking him questions. You seek him. You say, Lord, what does that mean? Now he's going to give you the explanation in a natural language. He's going to tell you this means that and that and that.